So we will now start to apply the liquid metal on to the CPU of this laptop. Personally, I like to use conductor node from Terminal Grizzly. And for laptop applications, not just the X1 Carbon, but for general laptop applications, make sure you use only a very small amount of liquid metal like you can see here. Otherwise, if you would push down the cooler onto it, it could squeeze out, go to the components on the bottom and cause some short circuits, which is something we really have to pretend. So if you apply liquid metal on a laptop, always just use a very, very tiny amount first, then try to mount the cooler, check the temperatures. Worst case, the temperature contact or the contact between the CPU and the cooler is not perfect. And then you just add a little bit more thermal paste or liquid metal afterwards. That's a lot better than applying too much first and risking having the liquid metal squeezing out from the side and touching some of the components on the bottom or on the PCB itself. The power consumption and therefore the temperature of the chipset is extremely low so we don't need thermal paste or liquid metal directly on the chipset. That's why we'll just stick to the CPU. On the heatsink itself it's really convenient to apply the liquid metal because we have those markings on the edges which were used previously to apply the thermal paste in the factory and we can just orientate on those small markings to apply the liquid metal. For any liquid metal application, especially in laptops, it's really important that you check the material of your heatsink because sometimes, especially the very cheap laptops, they can be made of aluminium and aluminium cannot be used with liquid metal because the gallium inside the liquid metal would then react together with the aluminium and damage your heatsink permanently. So what you can do is you can use a knife or something similar and do a simple scratch test on the heatsink. Simply scratch a little bit on the knife um, with the knife on the heatsink and then you will see if there is still like a copper shiny surface underneath or if it looks like aluminium underneath. Aluminium would look a little bit like silverish or grayish and if you would see that then you should stop and maybe contact the manufacturer of the laptop and double check the material of your heatsink before you proceed. But in this case we can clearly see the shiny copper underneath the scratches so everything is fine and we can continue applying the liquid metal or mount the heatsink back to the CPU. So the amount of liquid metal you can see here is really sufficient. Don't use more for the start because you can always apply more afterwards. Now we will put back the black isolation foil. First I was not sure if this is even needed or what it is for but then I figured out actually the black foil can be quite useful because it also protects the CPU and also the PCB of the laptop from the liquid metal. So worst case if something squeezes out it would rather be on top of the foil than be on the PCB or the CPU itself. So actually the foil is quite useful. So now that we're done with all that, we can put back the heatsink of the laptop. So simply slide it back to the right. Make sure you attach the cable back to the connector and mount the cooler back with the four screws. In the end, reattach the back cover of the laptop and then we will do the thermal testing again and check for results. All right, so we're back. I put everything back together, everything is working fine and I'm also already running Intel XCU so we will straight switch over to my laptop. As you can see on the bottom right corner power limit throttling is still active but compared to before we have no thermal throttling. So if you move over your mouse to the thermal throttling curve, that's the one that's currently always at the bottom. Previously we always had those spikes after, I don't know, four or five seconds or every four or five seconds, we had those thermal throttling spikes. So the CPU would reach the temperature limit of like 96, 97 degrees Celsius, would clock down, so we would lose performance and then it would clock back up. Now if we check the temperature in core temp, you can see under Intel XTU load, we're more in the area of like 85, 86 degrees Celsius maximum. So that's already quite an improvement. Obviously we cannot compare temperatures in idle simply because the temperature curve or the fan speed of the laptop is temperature dependent. Uh, so obviously if we change to liquid metal and the CPU is colder, the fan will simply spin lower. So the simply, uh, CPU um, temperature will be roughly the same. So what's really interesting, so previously we had around 930 points in XCU and now we have already 1020 points just 
by applying a liquid metal. I didn't touch anything else so far, but that's simply because the CPU clock is a lot more stable, simply because it's not constantly running into the CPU thermal limit. So if you take a look at the graph, this white curve that is going up here is power limit throttling. So obviously CPU is not in the thermal throttling area anymore, but since the CPU package power limit is still only 23 watt, it will always hit the power limit and adjust its CPU frequency and also core voltage accordingly. So what we can do now is we can lower the core voltage. By lowering the core voltage, we're effectively lowering the CPU temperature and therefore also lowering CPU power consumption and the result will be an average higher clock. So in Intel XCU, we just go to advanced tuning and here we have the core voltage offset. Use the offset because the CPU uses different clocks. It's adjusting the CPU clock all the time and also adjusting the CPU core voltage for power saving. That's why you should always just adjust the offset and not the um, actual CPU voltage and use a fixed mode. So if you want to do this at home, you should obviously do step-by-step -step testing. That's what I did before as well. So I tested in 20 millivolt steps checked how low I can go. I ended up at minus 145 millivolt, which is a huge difference. But then the issue was when I was testing PUBG under gaming load, I always got crashes after like 30 or 45 minutes. So obviously we want to keep some security margin. So I decided to go with minus 120 millivolt, which is still quite a lot. So just adjust this, go back to benchmarking and we will do another um, Intel XCU run and compare the clock and also the score to, be, to what we had before. So the XCU run is almost over, but we can already compare the clocks to what we had before. So if you check um, on the left side here, the core maximum core frequency of the CPU, if we move our mouse over to the previous run, we always had like 2.5, uh, like 3.3 to 2.5 gigahertz. And if we check now, it's more like 3.1, 2.9, 2.8, so we're not as low as before because sometimes Intel XCU is a bit strange when it comes to the score. Um, not sure how reliable it is, but if you just keep track of the CPU speed, I think it's more uh, effective. But we can see it's now 1062 points. Previously we had 1020 points. So it's still an increasement of, I would say like 5%, which is still really decent. So overall we're already at a uh, performance increase of around 15% just by applying liquid metal and also lowering the core voltage. If we go back to the graph, you can always see this white line, which is reporting if power limit throttling is active or not. So currently CPU power limit is still 23 watt of the CPU, which is stock. So whenever the CPU is hitting 23 watt, which is typically the case when you're under load, um, then the CPU will adjust the CPU core voltage and the core clock accordingly to stay within the power target. So what we can do, we go back to XTU controls and we adjust the turbo boost short power and turbo boost power max. So what I found out was like 45 watt on uh, the short power limit and 35 watt in the turbo boost power max was working really nicely for my laptop. What you have to keep in mind is obviously if you increase the power target of your laptop First of all, the power consumption is higher, which means if you're not running a stationary, if you're mobile, if you're playing somewhere on the road, then obviously power consumption will be higher. Your battery life will be a lot worse. One more thing you have to also keep in mind is that the cooling solution of the laptop is obviously not that great. We only have this very small heatsink and you always have to keep in mind that the heatsink has to be capable of dissipating the additional heat which is typically not an issue because the CPU always has the temperature limit. So whenever uh, we allow the CPU to consume more power, the CPU will get warmer. If it reaches the temperature limit, let's say of 97 degrees Celsius, it will, it will just throttle down as what we had on stock. So it's not really risky. So if we just check the graph in between the run, compare the graph from the left side, from the one where we did not adjust the power limit yet to the one on the right, you can straight see that the, the, the time frame when the power limit throttling is active is a lot shorter, um, but it's more often, which is fine. But effectively the CPU clock, sp clock speed will be higher, which is what we want. So final score is 1,082 points, which is another increase of like two or 3% in performance. 
which is really nice to have. I also did the same kind of testing for Cinebench. Unfortunately, Cinebench and OBS, OBS is what I use for recording the image you see on my laptop, they don't really work together nicely. So when you run OBS in the background and you run the Cinebench calculation every few seconds, somehow the system freezes and then it continues. So the image is quite, kind of strange. Also score is also affected by OBS. So I also did that uh, testing. And before adjusting anything on the laptop, before applying liquid metal, we had a score of 584 points in R15. Just by applying liquid metal and lowering the CPU core voltage, I was able to get a score of 676 points, which is a huge step in performance. And then also adjusting the power limit, I was able to get a score of 714 points. So overall, performance increase was like 22 or 23 percent just by applying liquid metal, lowering the core voltage and also increasing the power limit, which I think is absolutely massive. 22 percent is what you typically cannot even reach when you do desktop overclocking. So yeah, I would say personally, it's absolutely worth to spend uh, $5 on liquid metal and then spend uh, one hour of fine tuning your core voltage and maybe also adjust the power limit. So what about gaming in PUBG? Obviously I did the same testing again with the ASUS XG Station 2, the external graphics card solution. I attached it to my laptop, left the GPU on stock and did the same gaming testing as before. And previously we always had the issue that the CPU would hit the power limit. So we would hit like 96, 97 degrees Celsius. The CPU would throttle to 2.5, 2.7 gigahertz under load. After adjusting all of this, after applying liquid metal, lowering core voltage, increasing the power limit, the CPU was clocking a lot higher. So constantly we were seeing something between 3.3 and 3.6 gigahertz, which is effectively, I would say like 500 to 600 megahertz more, which is for gaming actually quite a lot. So personally, as I said before, spending $5 on liquid metal, doing those adjustments for like an hour, for me personally, absolutely worth it. I would probably not do the power target adjustments simply because it affects the battery life. But if you also keep in mind that adjusting the core voltage will also give you more battery life, it's probably worth spending some time on your laptop. If you plan to do something like that on your laptop as well, if you have any questions, maybe if you already had done some testing like this, if you um, tried liquid metal on your own laptop, please let me know in the comments. I would be interested to see what you experienced. I hope you liked the video. See you next time. Bye.